mentioned about concerts, uh, we know there's a lot of different special exhibits. I want to explore a little bit uh, the concerts that go on there. How do you determine who's going to come and play and how that's set up? Well, it's uh, <coughs> somewhat frustrating for a lot of folks that want us to have a lot of shows and a lot of concerts. We really don't. Uh, everything we do, for the most part, is connected to our educational programs in support of uh, what we do. We do have a, an annual gala that occurs most years in May. We won't next year because of the inductions. And we have a summer concert series where we do try to get some emerging bands. Other than that, almost everything we do is based on bringing artists in to interview them uh, for our archive series because we film and tape everything. We stream it now around the world and we film and tape it for the library so you'll be able to see all those uh, interviews and performances. Um, so we really, and also really want to compete. This, this city is a, still a great music city and it's still overvenued for the size of population that it has. And the, the club system here was extraordinary in the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s. I didn't grow up here, but I'm aware of it. And this club system is still quite quite something for the population that we have. And so the last thing we want to do is actually go out and compete by bringing lots of bands in and, and sort of take money off the table from those folks. Do you partner with some of the organizations? I remember a couple years ago, somebody came in and played the House of Blues, and I had heard that they were going to be over at the Rock Hall doing a special series the night before. Yeah, we, we try to partner with most of the clubs, House of Blues, Beachland, uh, Rock Shop, and often, uh, it allows us to get an artist here that we couldn't afford to pay to come, that we would bring in an extra day, sort of uh, pay the incremental cost of the hotels and the transportation so that we can do a Hall of Fame interview series and, and capture them for an hour to two hours talking about their, their careers. Interesting. You know, the special exhibits, there have been so many great special exhibits over the years, uh, Pink Floyd, The Wall, uh, James Joplin, the John Lennon. How do you determine what special exhibit you're going to do and what's the ramp up time to make something like that happen? Probably one of our biggest nightmares because uh, we we typically uh, uh, right now we have women who rock and hopefully if you haven't seen it um, please go see it uh, if for no other reason to see Gaga's meat dress uh, <laughs> go quickly it's deteriorating that's a joke it's not it's stabilized it's okay it's an, there are no critters involved here uh, but that exhibit uh, in some ways is easier because we didn't have to have the permission of any one artist. Uh, most often our major exhibits center around one individual and we get their permission whether they're alive or dead and that's it's not easy dealing with these folks because of their schedules and how they live their lives so consequently very often we'll start an exhibit a couple of years ago we started one with Neil Young and we went out to California he's kept everything in his life which is fabulous and his warehouse is full and then Neil decided he really wanted to spend his effort on uh, getting out all the uh, live concerts he'd have recorded over time and he completely went dark on just disappeared. Couldn't find him, wouldn't talk to us. And then one of his warehouses burned down. I don't know if you saw that, it was in the news about a year ago. So we had to walk away from that, and within about six months, we had to put something else together. So the ramp up time can be two to five years. Some things go away, some things restart. We do have a Grateful Dead exhibit opening in the week of the inductions. That inductions are April 14th, but we'll be doing nine days of activities. If any of you were here the last time, you'll want to be there again. But the Grateful Dead opens on Wednesday, April, like ninth or tenth, and hopefully all the dead, all the living dead will be here. As we say. Uh, and hopefully one of the living dead bands will play. Uh, and we we have gotten great cooperation from them, but that took a number of years because particularly with bands, if you have three or four members, there's always one person who hates museums, hates the ideas of exhibits, doesn't want their stuff on display, can come up with any number of reasons they don't want to they don't want to hear about. It. No special seance for Jerry or for Ron McKernan. No. Let's just say no. <laughs> so, how do you choose though? I mean, how do you decide it's going to be a Neil Young? Or how do you decide it's going to be that? Somebody on the board comes or does somebody come to you and say we want to do a life uh, retrospective? Well, occasionally an artist will come and say they think it's a good time. They have a window open that they like to work with us and then we try to be opportunistic. Um, secondarily, we have about 10 folks in our curatorial program that look at opportunities. They try to decide is there a critical mass of material out there either with the artist or with collectors that we can get our hands on. Mm -hmm. uh, we often, people will say, so why don't you have so-and-so's stuff on display? Well, sometimes artists won't give us their stuff. Sometimes their stuff has disappeared and collectors don't have it or they won't lend it to us. So it, it's problematic about how we get the material. Can we get uh, critical mass? And is the artist significant enough and had a big enough impact on the history of this music? So we really, we, we have to play at that level to begin with.